viruses in our lakes and streams. Is this an issue? Is it something that you got to be concerned about if you're hiking and camping? Well, we're going to jump into that. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dan Williams. I'm a licensed PA. Been practicing urgent care medicine, emergency medicine for about 43 years. We try to keep you safe. We give you scientific based research about things that occur in the outdoors from critters and ticks and snake bites. And today we're going to be addressing viruses in the water. And it actually is becoming an issue. Now, when I launched Survive in 2005, it really wasn't that huge of an issue. In North America, Canada, and the United States, you know, they were there, but it was very minimal. You know, you filtered your water, you boiled it, you were concerned about Giardia and Crypto and Campylobacteria. And those were the big ones that you had to be aware of. Lately, after I did this deep dive, because Michael asked a really good question, I did a short and I said, you know, viruses earlier aren't that big of a deal. Well, they are becoming a big deal. And so why is that? One, more people are in the outdoors. More people are hiking and they're through hiking, the Appalachian, the Pacific Trail, uh, camping's increased. We're talking about people going out in their vans and living in their cars. So it's an issue. And I think part of it, this is anecdotal, this is an IMO, in my opinion, that if I call it an IDGD syndrome, IDGD, I don't give a damn about other people's syndrome. And it's becoming really more and more and more. You see this at Starbucks where the person in front of you orders a coffee, they pull up six inches and they got to fix their hair and put the coffee cup and get the straw and everything, and not, don't have a clue that someone's behind them. Same thing happens with at the grocery store, uh, at a baseball game, just walking, and people have, they stop dead still. And this happens on the trail. I dove through tons of research on this. And right now, the Grand Canyon and the trails around there, the trails in Yellowstone, a lot of the lakes and streams are getting more and more contaminated. They've done tons of research on this. It's there. Um, so people aren't taking the time and thinking about other people and they're carving in the trees and spray painting rocks and pooping really inappropriately. They're not going out. They're not digging their cat hole deep enough. That is runoff. We've always had runoff from cattle farms and this and that. So what are these viruses that we need to be concerned about? We're going to discuss the viruses, the incubation period, and how you can basically take care of yourself when you're out there so you don't get the diarrhea. When I get a kid, young adult come in and they've had diarrhea for two or three days I, and no blood, I don't freak out about it. I'm like, okay, this is what you need to do. You know, you need to hydrate, 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 uh, bland diet. Sometimes I'll put them on a liquid diet if they're vomiting. But the big thing is Pedialyte, Gatorade, and get them hydrated. After four to five days, now I'm starting to be curious. And now I want them to come in and we're going to do stool samples. And we're going to find out what it is. Out of the viruses I, we're going to address, we're looking at adenovirus, rotavirus, norovirus, uh, hep A, and enterovirus. Out of all of those viruses, the two most contagious are norovirus and rotavirus. So I'll have a kid come in, a seven-year-old with diarrhea. He got it at a, some daycare center. And within 10 days, the whole family has it. And the other thing they need to do is get a little container, one part bleach, 10 parts water, spray all the light switches, all the doorknobs, because stuff's contagious. Touch it, they're putting food and candy in their mouth, and it goes through the house. So in the outdoors, norovirus is the most common. And things like um, a rotavirus, you can get that if someone sneezes or coughs. It can be respiratory and it can be ingested. So Science Digest in 2023 posted this massive research study that they did at Lake Geneva, Switzerland, which is a very commonly sought after place to go to vacation. And they did tons of studies on the water and viruses. Now, one thing I learned when researching this, which surprised the hell out of me, is the EPA does not have any criteria to look at viruses. They, they don't which really surprised me, actually. Well, what they found was is that there are a lot of things that regulate 
the viruses in terms of it being bad for you in the outdoors. One is solar radiation, the amount of sunlight on the lake, the wind and the placidity of the lake, if you will, in terms of it being stagnant or is it moving. Clearly some of these are no brainers. But if you have if you're on, if you have a westward wind and you're on the east side of that lake and you're at the beach or you're hiking, the virus content on that east side is going to be much higher. And clearly warm weather, sunlight, you know, oh, sun's going to kill the virus. Uh, warm temperatures will absolutely decrease your viral load in that lake as opposed to cool areas. So that's important to know. It has to get up pretty damn high to eliminate the viral load on that lake. Out of all of the studies I've looked at, the norovirus was the number one culprit in the United States in the lakes. And then uh, the other thing we have to be concerned about is hep A. But if I took a filter and scooped up lake water, you realize the person that's pooping on the side, you'd have to have many people with hep A pooping on the side on the trail. Water has to run off into the stream. You're going to filter this. It has to be, I mean, so if you think about that, you would have to have a quite a high number of a viral load of hep A in order to get hep A. You, yes, it's possible. And in 43 years, I can tell you that the vast majority of camping, hiking related diarrhea has been Giardia, Crypto, Campo. It has not been viral. How do I know that? One of the things that I ask my providers to do frequently is you got to take the time to do a thorough history. What have you done in the last two months or in the last month? Have you camped? Have you fished? Have you skied? Have you hiked in the woods? You have to ask all these questions. And that is a really nice red flag. Do you live on a farm? Do you have turkeys and geese and whatever? So those are really important questions. So what do you have to do in the outdoors? What do I suggest to knock out these viruses? Well. 70 bucks for an S2, you really don't have to, but this will obviously keep your brain, will have less anxiety and keep you safe. The Sawyer, which we talked about, will not get rid of viruses, but a lot of people are doing this, and I question it, but all right, here we go. A lot of people are doing the Sawyer filter on the smart water bottle, which fits well, and then they're taking something like portable aqua, you can get two bottles for $15. There's 50 tablets in here. You put two of these tablets in a quart of water, it kills viruses, it kills the whole nine yards. And a lot of people are taking the Sawyer, they're filtering it to get rid of their bacteria, and then they'll take two of these and put it in the water. Well, it kills all the bacteria and viruses anyways. Just use this for God's sakes. So I'm not really sure why that's they're combining the two, but nevertheless, they are. And it will keep them, obviously, diarrhea-free. And you know you can also do a, to a quart, no, to a gallon is one teaspoon of bleach. You can do it that way also. But it's kind of a pain in the butt to take that out into the woods and hike camp. And you can always boil it. And it's not three minutes. You boil it when it comes to a rolling boil for 15, 30 seconds. It's good to go. So all of these viruses can cause diarrhea and they are self-limiting. The problem is, is the kiddos, the little ones, the little ones across the world are dying from norovirus, not adults. They get dehydrated so quickly. So that's the problem. The incubation period on these viruses is usually less than four days on all of these, except one, and that is hep A. And that can be up to a month to two months after exposure. So that's a problem. The good news is, and I got the vaccine, is they make a vaccine for hepatitis A that is 95 to 98% effective after the first. It's a two dose. You get a dose of the hep A vaccine, it's one ml, and then a month later you get the second dose, done. They also make a combo vaccine where you get the vaccine and it's hep A, hep B combined. You know, and I know I'm going to have some probably anti-vaxxers out there, but I'm here to tell you you anti-vaccine guys, you guys, you're not going to go overseas because you have to show that you got the vaccine to a lot of countries. It is going to keep you safe. It is extremely effective. Side effects are nil to none. 
Um, so there you go. I've had it. Uh, when I was getting ready to go over to Africa, got that vaccine, I'm good. It's good for 25 years. So the other ones, it's just going to make your camping trip miserable because you're going to have bouts of six to seven, ten times a day of watery diarrhea. You do 90% of the time, no blood, bloating, gut pain, and then it dissipates and it goes away. Not a huge issue. So are there viruses that we have to be concerned about in the United States and North America, Canada and North America? Absolutely. We got to be somewhat concerned about it. I wouldn't freak out. In, even in the last year or two, I've been drinking with just the Sawyer Mini. I've had no problems. Um, so thanks for the question, Michael. I hope this helps everybody out there. Some peace of mind. Be safe. And when you're pooping, poop correctly, guys. Go off the trail at least 50 to 80 yards. Dig a cat hole at least minimum 12 inches. Do your business. Cover it up. Get back. Have a good time. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. We'll see you next time.